Hi, so today I'm going to be doing a debating workshop where I teach students how to generate points and arguments quickly and effectively. This is especially important if the students involved in the competitive scene, where the ability to think about points quickly and effectively is really important in dictating the success of that debate because only given a short period of time, only 15 minutes to prepare, this becomes really important. And so the way I usually run my sessions is I usually have 15 minutes at the start where I give a tutorial as to how to, for example, generate points. I talk about all the different types of methods and um, options as to how to do this. And then I include lots of examples and activities within this to engage the student in that learning. And then afterwards, I have a set period of time where the student can actually debate. <clears throat> because I think the best way to learn debating is to do debating. So given all of that, let's jump straight into the session. So hi guys, today we are going to learn about point generation. But before we do that, let's talk about what debating is and what it means to you. So can you guys tell me what debating is and why it might be important? So for me personally, I think that debating is the ability to protect your stance and prove why you are correct. Well, main, maybe not correct, but why you're relatively more correct than your opposition. So for example, if we take the age old debate of which is better, cats or dogs? It's not necessarily true that cats are better than dogs or that dogs are better than cats. But if you use certain points, you can prove why you're relatively more true than your opponent. So some example of points are, is that cats are cuter than dogs. That's not necessarily true, but you can prove it through some reasons. And then you can go on to explain why cuteness is a really key metric in determining which is better. Or you could argue that dogs are better than cats because they've evolved over centuries and become compatible with humans. So I've had two points here, cuteness and compatibility. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to talk about how to generate these sort of points, which, which, helps, you, um, which helps you support the stance that you're currently sitting on. So let's talk about what we are going to cover. So today we are going to cover a few things. We're going to talk about how to make a point, but within that, we're going to talk about where to think and how to think. And lastly, how to structure all those thoughts. Because you guys are going to make lots of really great points up during preparation time. But if you can't structure that in a succinct and effective way, then your speech unravels and it becomes no use to you. Cool, let's move on. Let's talk about how to make a point and where to think. So let's all consider the motion of this house would ban exams. Can you take a minute to think about some points as to why we should ban exams, not shouldn't, why we should ban exams? So here I would usually just give the students one minute to think about the motion. I would then bring them back, give them some tips as to how to do this better, and then set them off again in another minute to think about points and hopefully then it should be better. So I guess I'm just, I'm just going to take off from when they come back. Hi guys, so those are all really great points, but here's some tips as to how to do that more effectively. So there's two ways. The first is to consider the stakeholders involved. The second is to consider practical and principal points. Now let's talk about the first one. So what is a stakeholder? What do you guys think a stakeholder is? Yeah, that's correct. As the name suggests, it's anybody or any group, any person who has a stake in the debate. So who are the stakeholders in this debate, guys? So we have students, they are the ones sitting the exams. We have teachers, we have the government, well, more specifically Ofqo, who are the organization who implement the exam. We have workplaces and universities who use exam results as a metric as to who to let into their company or institution. So there are a bunch of, so we've just outlined a bunch of stakeholders. Can you guys, which, which stakeholders should we now focus on? Cool, yeah, we can focus on students. So once you've thought about all your stakeholders, pick one and then run through these questions with them. You want to think about how students are affected by exams. We want to talk about why students are affected by exams, when students are affected by exams, and where they are affected by ex exams. Given all of this, you then explain why they therefore should be, why exams therefore should be banned. 
So let's go through all of these questions together. Let's start with the first. How are students affected by exams? Yeah, so students might be, might be affected by exams through their mental health. Um, exams are already, are already stressful and high intensity um, thing to go through. So that would probably cause a strain on the child's mental health. So that's how it can affect a student through mental, for, through mental health. Now, why are students impacted by exams? Now, this is quite intuitive, but it's really important in developing those foundations in the debate when you form an argument. So I, I guess the answer is students are made to sit exams. Um, it's compulsory for students to sit, sit exams at the age of 16 when everyone has to sit GCSEs, right? Now, when are they affected? Now, noticing this question and answering this question can actually be quite useful in winning the debate. Because note that students are often around the age of 16 when they have to sit exams. And the problem with this is that at that age, you aren't an adult and you're probably living with your family. And so the family environment around you and you know the community environment around you has a big impact on how well you do on these exams. So that's an interesting point to consider. Now we've answered how, why and when students are affected. We now want to gather up the answers to all of these questions and then talk about why given this, exams should be banned. So what I would do is I would explain how exams cause students to become stressed. This is because students have to do sit exams and that's a compulsory requirement. But at that age of 16, students are liable. The, the exam results are completely dependent on the environment. So that's the school environment or the family environment. And this is really unfair because some people have better schools than others and some people have better family environments than others. When the, le when the playing field isn't even, it's not right to make all the students sit an exam and then dictate them on that. There should be some contextualization within that. Currently, we don't have enough and therefore we should ban it because it causes a mental strain on students. So that could be the point there. Um, so that's how to think about points through stakeholders. The second is to talk about principle versus practical points. Now, what do you guys think that is? Yeah, practical points are just points which have any practical implications. So we should ban exams because it causes a, a negative impact on mental health. That's a practical point. But the principle points are more interesting. They are points which are value based. So they refer to points which talk about fairness, human rights, justice. So an example here is we should ban exams because last year's cohort did not set the exam. So we should not too. So that's a fairness argument. And it might be quite interesting in considering that when you think about point when you think about points, because some motions don't have very obvious practical points. Um, but more generally it refers to arguments such as bodily autonomy, the right to privacy, the right to self-determination, which we can talk about another day, or um, if you guys have any questions at the end. Now lastly, let's talk about how to structure all of these wonderful points that you guys have made. So first you want to signpost. What do you guys think signposting is? Yeah, it's exactly what I did at the start when I told you what I'm going to cover. It's when you tell the audience what you intend to tell them. Um, so it's, take it as like a trailer for what your speech is going to look like. And so the way I would do it and the way I would recommend you guys do it is start your speech by saying, ladies and gentlemen, I have two, three, one argument for you today. For you today, explaining why exams should unequivocally be banned. One, it places a strain on the mental health of young people. Two, it is not an accurate nor fair representation of the intelligence of young people. And then you want to go on and explain that. But here, structure, in terms of structure, it's very important to signpost your argument. Um, yeah, so that's all we've learned today. Um, that was a quick run through as to how to make points and briefly how to structure that. And do you guys have any questions? Yeah, so that's how I would um, run a debating tutorial. I think that's it. And bye-bye. Um,